with us today is Joe Maloney. And Joe, we saw your truck. You visited the Flying Cruise Inn. This is a 1935 International C1. And what an unusual truck. You you never see internationals dressed up like this. No, no. Well, I worked at International all my life. So when I got ready to retire, I wanted to look for an International, obviously. And I found this out in South Dakota on an Indian reservation. Uh, just west of Pier, South Dakota, out in the middle of nowhere. So you went out and got it? Yep, 1,100 miles one way. How would you find a truck on an Indian <laughs> reservation? Well, I actually started out off on eBay with one and called the individual, and he already had it sold, but he recommended this gentleman at the Indian reservation had another one. So I got a hold of him, and that's how I ended up with this. Well, what kind of shape was it in? Uh, it was on blocks, and it was uh, rusty, obviously. No tires on it, so they put some temporary tires on it and stuff for us to haul it back. Were you looking for a 35, or, or was it just uh, this? Not necessarily. I was just looking for an international pickup, uh -huh. and I ran across some pictures of this, and I like the body style. That's when I start trying to look for this one. How long did it take you to get it into this shape? What was the process? Well, let's see. I bought it in March of 2001, and it was on the road running in uh, December 2005. Wow, amazing. Almost five years. Yeah. A lot of late nights. Yes. Beautiful paint job. Uh, this color just makes this truck. What is it? It's a 2005 Cadillac paint. Actually, my wife picked it up. Uh, we were over at the shop that was going to do the paint and body work. And there was another car there that he had done. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, my wife liked it right away. So she says, I want that color. So that's what we ended up with. Beautifully done and, and customized, but yet you, you kept the original look. Correct, correct. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to modernize it, like the front axle and air conditioning and stuff like that and new suspensions. But I wanted to keep the old look. So What's the transmission underneath it? Uh, 700R4. Automatic. Automatic. So uh, you take it right down the freeway, 70 mile an hour? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll cruise right down the road. A little rough. It's stiff, stiff suspension, but uh, out on smooth roads, it's nice. What, what engine would it originally have had in it? It had an inline six-cylinder, okay. big old heavy engine. What engine's in it? Uh, this is the basic engine, and what I got on it, I get about uh, 285 horsepower, which is plenty for me. Cubic inch? 350. I got it down at Louisville Nationals. A Chevrolet dealer down there had a special, and I bought a whole package, the engine, the carburetor, the distributor, air cleaner, chrome package, all that. It was a good deal, so I got it way ahead of when I needed it. The uh, logos on the truck uh, are original. Yes, both the international nameplate and the triple diamond on the front. And then on the engine valve covers, I also have a triple diamond. A unique license plate on the truck. Uh, all the credit goes to my wife on that. She spent months looking for something, had all kinds of names listed on a sheet. Then you had to call the BMV to see if that wasn't taken. And uh, so I got to give all the credit to her on that. And it says? A35 to NV. And I think that's a true statement, Joe. Yes, yes, you're right. The original radiator cap is still there. Uh, it's a dummy cap, actually, because with the modern engine, you have to have pressurized radiator system. So it's a pressurized cap underneath. But I wanted to keep the original look. So we had a hunk of stainless steel. A friend of mine uh, milled it down to this shape, had it polished, then we drilled and tapped two holes in it, run screws up from the bottom to keep that original look. It's not functional, but it gives the original look. You got some talented friends, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> you need them when you're doing something like this. How did you come up with the wheels? Well, there's a million wheels around, so I just started looking, and these kind of caught my eye. So they're American wheels, they call them. Uh, I like them, so I bought them right away also. So I've had them for a long time. So you started building the truck around those wheels? Yes. I really love the uh, look of the cab. Uh, did you uh, make any changes to the original truck? Yes, we chopped it three inches. It had a natural rake to it, which was nice. So we chopped it three inches. And then because we chopped it, 
the bed was out of proportion, so that's why we shortened up the bed and the wheelbase to make it proportional. The suicide doors, I just love that. The original doors were hinged up front, uh -huh. great big ugly hinges. I've always had a thing for suicide doors. So we switched them and put hidden hinges in here. And flushed it, it nice all out. Yeah, flushed it all out. Yeah, yeah. And then the front end, uh, you put some chrome up there, but the front end is really original. Uh, the grill I had made, mm -hmm. it's original design grill. They took the original grill and transposed it over to stainless steel so that I don't ever have to worry about it rusting or anything. And the lights? The lights are aftermarket lights. But they're physically the exact same size as the originals. Truck bed back here. It looks like a gymnasium floor. <laughs> A friend of mine got some raw white oak and uh, planed it down for me, and then I finished it off. Joe, this truck's still sitting on the original frame. Correct, correct. It was uh, very strong yet. It was a little rusty, but we had it uh, sandblasted and painted. It was good and strong. Nothing wrong with it. Dual exhaust, what uh, muffler package you got on it? I, oh, actually, the exhaust was done by Mr. Paul Walker, uh -huh. and he put the mufflers on. And it's all stainless steel, clear from the headers, clear back, even the hangers, stainless steel. Beautiful custom interior in this truck, and you were saying it's a rather unusual fabric. The accents on it are ostrich skin, and the leather, and then it's on the headliner, the doors, and the back of the seats. And he even made a little plate in there, 1935 International. Incredible work. Very nice, very nice. Steering wheel, that's a custom steering wheel. Where'd that come from? Flaming River. Picked the wheel up before the color of the body, but it matches up <laughs> it real sure fine. It sure does, yeah. Joe, have you, have you always been interested in vintage vehicles? Did, was this your first project? Yes, first and last. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a retirement, and uh, how, how long did you work at International? 40 years. Oh, so you got to be proud. I mean, you're 40 years at International, and now you're driving this around. It's really a tribute to, uh, to your career. Yes, I, uh, that, like I say, that's why I look for an international truck since I worked there all my life. We want to thank you for your time today. You suggested doing this here at Huntington University, your home area, and uh, we sure appreciate your time and your participation at the Flying Cruise Inn. This is one nice truck. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming over, and I'll be at the Cruise Inn again this year. We'll look forward to seeing you.